Oh my gosh, what is this thing? Oh! Swords where they shouldn't be, there's a fungus among us, and a little game of mummy or full body cast. What? There's been a lot of you requesting this show in the comments, so that's why today we are breaking down and reacting to all of the um, magical medical scenes and injuries from Owl House. Let's dive right in. Whoa. Oh! I don't know exactly what's happening here. What is happening? I see that there's like almost like a schemey or death to the arm, to the side of the body, and you see veins that are popping up. Maybe it's blood vessels. Hey, I promised a special kid I'd protect you. It's really interesting. We have a lot of superficial veins. We have very deep veins. We have basically arteries and other types of blood vessels that are all running there. On the surface there, quite superficially, it's mostly the veins. To be able to feel, uh, let's say, a pulse, right? You're feeling deeper blood vessels. rips off somebody's arm. If the arm is, say, dead or gangrenous, we have something called dry gangrene where the limb actually just turns dry and dead where it's black in color. It can snap off pretty easily and break. I'm it. I had the same reaction that those people had. So crazy superpowers, somebody explodes. How does this relate to what I do on a daily basis? It doesn't. But we do see injuries where people are thrown from vehicles. You worry about the blunt trauma injuries. What does the inside look like? Oh my gosh, what is this thing? burn injuries. We see them often enough. You're dealing with first degree, second degree, third degree, and the occasional fourth degree. Fourth degree meaning the worst tissue, bone, bone! super deep, like muscle. If you or your aunt want to. Ow, a punch right to the nose. Common. You gotta be careful. People punch each other in the face all the time. Ends up hurting your own hand. Nasal fractures are quite common. Most people don't need surgery or realignment of the nose after it's been broken. It usually stays pretty close to the anatomic position that it should be in. Whoa. Cool. Talk to me, Gus. I I think something's broken. <gasps> oh. <laughs> if you're falling from great heights, be careful putting out your arms. Our hands and wrists and forearms, those typically snap pretty easily. You want to, if you can, tuck and roll, but in the moment it's hard to do that. Hey. I know I won't be home for a while, so that's why tonight. Wait, I remember this now. I'll be leaving in style. Cool. You see that dilation of the pupil? Your pupils dilate because of allowing light in or out. So if there's a lot of light, the pupil goes really small. If it's really dark, you're actually your eyes will dilate up so you can get as much light in. Ah! Whoa. Oh man, what happened to the eye? Eye injuries, they're hard to deal with. Ophthalmologists, eye specialists are really not on call at every hospital. They need to do most of their work at the office with all the equipment that they have. The hospitals don't have all that equipment. Hey, sis. Oh my gosh. I've never actually seen a human being in a full body cast. Then there's also a cervical collar on and those sticks to keep the arms up. If you're in plaster of Paris or ortho glass splint, that stuff is set. It's not going anywhere. You don't need those sticks to keep it in place. I don't care. I'm going to hug my sister. Oh! Uh, sibling! Yeah, so really hard to be able to break through like that. Really almost impossible to be able to do that. Obviously, people can do it. People snap them. But it's really hard to do, especially in that position. Typically, you're in a cast because something is broken and painful, so you're not going to actually do that. What happened? After you and Dad left the factory, I bravely set off to find you. Then I was tragically cornered by one of the collector's spies. Interesting. See all these, like, uh, circles? They look like bruises. Ecchymosis which again will go away it's just blood underneath the tissue and the body will reabsorb it and turn it into different colors purple blue and then it'll go to like green yellow and then disappear god we had a connection never it oh 
Whoa, stab right to the left center chest, hemothorax, pneumothorax, maybe even hit the heart. Hi. Now, if it's in this position and not taken out, get to the hospital ASAP. Obviously, if you take it out and it's just a puncture of the lung, you're gonna have air seeping out. You're gonna potentially develop a tension pneumothorax or a sucking chest wound, all these different things that you have to think about. Oh, who did I know? Okay, so I've never seen a sword go in somebody's skull. I've seen lots of trauma of people's heads in the sense of different objects that have attempted to get in there. Knives, they don't go in very easily. Oh my gosh, you can't. <laughs> if that sword goes into your frontal lobe, the frontal lobe of your brain, the front part, it's related to personality versus the motor function and sensory are kind of on the side. You good? That sounded painful. Sewing machines, you gotta be really careful. I've actually seen a few sewing machine injuries that have actually come to the emergency department because somebody has threaded themselves by accident where the needle comes down, stabs them, and then like thread through it. We just pull it out. I think I can handle a little pain. Oh. Pain. The question ends up being, did the bone get injured? So we'll take a look and make sure on an x-ray if the bone was involved. And if there is, you probably have a lower threshold to starting somebody on an antibiotic just because you don't want the bone to get infected and cause something called osteomyelitis, which is an infection of the bone and it takes a long time for that to heal. A long, long time. Does this seem fine to you? Whoa. <laughs> it's like I have snakes for arms. Please. <laughs> she just has the common mold. It's harmless. Interesting, a common mold. So we're tripping out and then also describing uh, these psychedelic mushrooms because she's like, woo, weirded out. They're actually studying mushrooms now, the psychedelic ones to see if they are safe enough to be able to use with people with say like PTSD and other kind of illnesses affecting the brain. Holy cow! Wow. It's like Last of Us. Owl house style. So they're saying mold, but it looks more like a fungus. Mold, fungus, pretty much synonymous. And now you have this mushrooms like growing on her head. Typically mushrooms grow on decaying matter. I feel great. I wonder if this is permanent. Mushrooms in general do have their benefits. Lion's mane, cordyceps, reishi. Those are all mushrooms that are non-psychedelic mushrooms that have been shown to be beneficial to humans. Trust the fungus. Very interesting, this owl house. It was really fun to react to. Should I do more owl house reacts? Let me know in the comments. And as always, please make sure you binge watch this playlist right here and make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.